Amen. We thank God for his presence, for being with us here tonight. I'd like to look in the book of Ezekiel. So Ezekiel chapter 47, we're going to read the first five verses. We sang about the song, Step Into the Water, and this is potentially the passage of scripture where maybe that, that song is connected to. So Ezekiel chapter 47, afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward for the forefront of the house stood toward the east and the waters came down from under the from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar then brought me he out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looks eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. This is a question, you know, uh, we heard uh, Brother Noah sing to us uh, Keith Green song from the 80s. This is a question that goes back to the 80s. So some of you might not be able to, uh, to answer it, uh, but uh, how many of you remember or maybe were a part of some of the activities that we did with the young people back in those days when we were going to the University of California at Davis swimming pool. Was anybody here a part of that? Uh, okay, maybe four people, right? A lot of them have moved on to different locales, but what we used to do at times with the young people back in those days, you know, Gail would take the big bus or the bus, one of those buses, and would drive us young people or someone would drive there to UC Davis. And you know, at that time I was going to UC Davis, so I knew about this, the fact that you can go into their swimming pool area. Uh, not only students register there, but everybody else could join in and you can enjoy a, a nice day swimming. And we did that you know, over a few years, a few times during the summer. And it was a great activity for the young people. Everybody enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. A lot of things that uh, we did enjoy there. And um, at that pool area, they had at least three different pools uh, of different depth of water. There was a water, you know, a pool with water in the kiddie pool, right? Just about one foot of water, right? Then there was a water in a pool with a water about four or five feet. Something Taylor made for me since... I'm not a, a good swimmer. That's, that's where you would find me typically in that kind of a, you know, pool. And then there was another pool with the, or, you know, the continuation maybe of that was one big giant pool maybe, but uh, six to 13 feet of water with a diving board, right? And, uh, you know, people would dive and enjoy, enjoy that water. Now, for you guys, for you young people, which pool would you guys go to? What would be the first one? For you young people that you would go to, anybody go to that one foot pool? Probably, probably not, probably not, right? Uh, most likely you would go to the deeper waters, the deeper pool to dive in. Actually, that's most young people. I don't think anybody went to that pool unless they wanted to lie down flat in the water. Uh, maybe that's, that's part of it, maybe some can do. But, you know, we enjoy, you, you know, if you like swimming, you know, you can't swim in one foot of water, right? It'd be very hard. You'd scrape your knees on the, on the bottom of the pool. So, but you want to be in a, in a pool deep enough where you can turn and twist and do all kinds of, you can dive deep, go deep and, and swim, right? So you'd enjoy that, uh, that pool. So this passage here of scripture, uh, and I like this passage when we're talking about going deeper with the Lord, because it, it, it portrays, it gives me an image in my mind of that, of going deeper in the water to a pool or to a, you know, ocean, river, whatever, that you can get in away from the shore 
and you can enjoy the waters and enjoy the swimming in that area. And that's what I like to focus briefly here tonight, that of going deeper with the Lord. As young people, being a young people service, youth service, you know, that's one of the things that you want to do, right, is go deeper with the Lord. Obviously, for us who are a little older, that's still the same pursuit. We never, we never graduate. I know some have graduated from school, but we never graduate from serving the Lord. We always continue on with, with serving the Lord and wanting to go deeper in our walk with the Lord. So likewise, spiritually, we want to go deeper with the Lord. We don't want to stay in the shallows. We don't want to stay in one foot of water, but we want to go on deeper with God and the things that he has for us. And it's a good walk. I know what we heard that said it's not the easiest, but it's the best for us. And it's the best long term. That's, it. That's what counts. It's got the best eternity uh, plan, right? And we want to be a part of that, regardless of how difficult or might be along the way. Now, uh, this passage here, uh, if, you know, it's, uh, it's an int- the way we understand it, it's a prophecy about the future, about the millennium, when uh, the Lord Jesus will be ruling here on earth, and how there will be waters coming from, from Jerusalem temple, going down towards the, the sea, possibly the Dead Sea, and uh, it will heal that, that sea. talks about the water, uh, this river of you know, fresh water, living water, uh, where there will be trees on each side, and there will be a multitude of fish in the Dead Sea. Today there's no fish, no life in the Dead Sea. But on, on, that, on that time when Jesus will reign on earth, it will be uh, healed, and this is that river. But as I mentioned, the, the most the, what I want to focus on is that image of us going deeper. Now, this is not the only passage in um, in, uh, in our Bibles that uh, talks about going into deeper water. Luke chapter five. I'm going to refer to this briefly here too. Luke chapter five. Jesus was preaching to multitudes uh, on the seashore, and. He got in a, in, a, in, a, in a boat there so he could, you know, be heard better, preach the gospel. And then he goes into the ship, uh, Simon Peter's ship, and he says, you know, go a little way from land. He goes and preaches the gospel after, you know, a service. However long that service was, an hour or so of, of preaching the gospel, he, uh, uh, he says to Simon in verse 4, launch out into the deep. And let down your nets for a for draft of fish, for a catch, for a big catch. And what does Simon says? Lord, we've been out there toiling and fishing all night long, and we have caught nothing. Not for lack of hard work, but just there's nothing there. So we've been at it, and uh, you know, now you tell us, go back out there into the deep water. And let down your net because you'll catch a great many fish. No doubt he was thinking in his mind, how is this going to be? How is this going to work out? Because we've tried it already and it's not working. It hasn't worked. But he says, and this is what I love about this passage. says, uh, uh, nevertheless, master, we have toiled and I have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Right? Even when to us we don't see clearly how all things are going to work out, but when we follow the Lord, we need to say, nevertheless. Amen. Nevertheless, we'll follow your way, Lord. I'll say yes to your way, to your plan for my life, because you know what's ahead. I don't, but you know, and if we follow you, it's going to work out. And what happened? Amen. What happened? They caught so many fish, it says, that they called the next boat. Hey, come on over. We have too many, too many fish. And they put all the fish in both boats, and they started to sink. That's how many fish there were. So they barely made it to the shore. Well, again, that, that image in my, my mind about going deeper. Yeah. That's what the Lord is asking you, and that's what the Lord is asking me today, for us to go deeper in our walk with the Lord. Spiritual parallels that we could, that we could uh, follow. Now, could Jesus have brought the fish close to the shore? Could he have said, you know, we are, we're here, we're close to the, to the shore. There's no reason to expend extra energy. 
You know, I know you guys toiled all night and you are tired uh, after all this work. Let's have the fish miraculously come near and all, you know, that's what sometimes they do in fishing, right? They try to drive the fish towards the shore where there's the nets. There's a method of fishing that way. So Jesus could have done that to say, oh, let's just bring in the fish nearby. But no. Why? Because he wanted to sh teach him a lesson about going deeper in our experience. It takes, takes our all. We cannot do this part-time. No. We cannot do this half-heartedly. We have to give it all. No. And that's a call for each one of us. Yeah. Call for me, a call for you. We all have to give it all to the Lord if it's going to bring the result that God has in plan for you and for me. If we hold short of that, it's not going to work the way that the Lord had planned for us. So we must have that purpose and that desire in our mind. Now, if we go back to the image of the... Uh, uh, in Ezekiel, where you know, initially the water was only ankle deep and then knee deep and so on. Notice it's a, you know, it's like a, it's a gradual. It didn't go all the way from ankles to deep water, right? Well, that tells me, in a parallel for us spiritually, we got to put in the time. There's no shortcut in receiving God's blessing. We can't skip and, uh, and, and expect God to pour out his power on us. We must go the way God has for us. Take the, the, the road and the path and the time needed for us to get to that point. It's not, otherwise, it's not going to work. It's not going to work out. So we must be patient and determined and put in the time if we want to go deeper in our walk with the Lord. I have a question for you, especially you young people, but for all of us. Do you want to go deeper with the Lord? Do you want to go to deeper waters in your experience? Or do you want to stay closer to the shallows where, yes, it's safe, right? It's not so many things, you know, not so difficult, you know? It's easier there. Whereas going deeper takes some effort, takes energy, takes patience, takes all that we have. We can't do it part way. So do you want to go deeper to a deeper walk with the Lord? In other words, get closer to God. That's what that refers to. So as I was thinking about that, you know, think about three, three things that we can do to help us get deeper with the Lord, to get to that deeper experience or deeper walk. And, you know, by the way, that's for all of us. Even if you have received all your experiences, deeper experiences, you know what? Those are just the beginning of the walk with the Lord. The Lord has more for us. The Lord is imaginative God, a creative God. He's got plenty blessings coming our way if we follow him. He's not going to run out of blessings, right? But he's got plenty in store for us if we go on in, this, uh, in our walk with the Lord a little deeper. So the first thing I was thinking that, you know, if we want to receive this deeper, this blessing from the Lord, the blessing of uh, a, a deeper walk with him, the first thing it, I think it requires is that it starts with a desire. It starts with us wanting that experience or wanting, deeply wanting that in our life, right? It starts, that's the first spark that starts, right? Uh, I remember when I received my, my baptism in the, in the 80s that uh, it did start just like that. With a little spark, a little desire, uh, I saw one of my friends after service that she was very happy and excited and was giving hugs to everybody. And, you know, I just saw that at the back of the church after service. And I was wondering, well, you know, I wonder what's going on. You know, as I'm 15, 16 years old, uh, 15 years old. Uh, and I was wondering, what's going on? I wonder if she's leaving somewhere or what. So later on, I heard that, that she received the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost that night. And right when I heard that, something sparked in my heart. It says, you know what? I want to get the same thing. I want to receive the same experience. If the Lord baptized her, he could baptize me also. That was the initial spark, initial desire that moved me in that direction to where then I, I sought the Lord for that experience. Do you want to be closer to God? you got to have that spark. Without that desire, it's not going to go very far. We'll flounder along the way. We'll remain by the shallows. We'll not have the courage 
and the strength and desire to go on deeper because we'll, we'll remain close to the shallows. So we need that first spark to get us going. Then after we have that initial desire, we got to put in the time. I call that the second point. It, there's no shortcuts in receiving God's blessing. God, God will bless us in his right time. When, uh, when we're at the point uh, that we're ready, God will bless us. And we must do a few things here when I call them putting the time. We got we to gotta pray. All right, we got to pray. Um, I was talking to somebody recently about, uh, you know, how our church, or somebody actually described how our church services were to this person who doesn't come to our church, says, you know, the way they do it at Apostolic Faith Church, yes, they pray during the service, during the, but then at the end of the service, they all come together after the, the sermon, and then they pray, and then they pray. And this person was thinking, oh, that's not so good. And I said, well, why? So why? In case I'm done with prayer and I, cannot, I don't know how to pray any longer and I want to talk to somebody, but they continue praying, then I have to wait for them for a long time till they're finished with prayer. And I was thinking, well, in my mind, I didn't say it. You know, that's not a very good reason. Uh, but uh, and I was thinking, you know what? And, and if I use my wife as an example, uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I think it was or so longer maybe than that, you know, sometimes she was asking, you know, when I pray and I'm done praying, and I cannot just keep on praying, in other words, how, how do I pray longer? Because, you know, when I'm done praying, I cannot think of anything else to pray about, and I just, I just get up and go, right? And maybe some of us are in that boat where, you know, we pray, we pray for a while, and then maybe we're done with prayer, and then we just get up and go. But when we're seeking the Lord, you know, we need to do go a little more than that, right? We need to continue on praying till, till God re sends us his blessing. And I just told her, you know what? All you can do is just ask God to help you and, you know, start praising the Lord. You can use some of the Psalms as examples of what you can do to praise the Lord and, and just keep thanking God. And, you know, God will bring to your mind what you can pray for, Amen. right? And God is faithful in doing that. But, uh, you know, prayer is not just something, you know, we do just, you know, I think there was a book, uh, Read the Bible one minute, a, one minute a day, something of that type. You know, where all you need is one minute. Well, that's good if you don't have, you know, whatever. If you're somewhere, you don't have time. But that can't be our devotional time. One minute with the Lord, that's not enough. And, you know, anywhere. So we must put in the time in prayer and reading God's word and studying and attending church and, uh, and living the life that God has called us to live. Matthew 5, 16, the words of Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they may do it. They may glorify your father, which is in heaven. So we must live that life of a, of a Christian, uh, a real Christian and do the works that belong to that. We also must forgive one another, right? If there's something in between, uh, Jesus said, go ahead and leave it at the altar and go ask forgiveness, right? So if we want to go deeper with the Lord, all these are putting in the time, taking no shortcuts, but doing what the Lord has called us to do. Do you want uh, to go deeper with the Lord? You know, that's, this is the way, right? And we must be patient. James 5, 7 tells us that we need to have the patience of a farmer, you know, I'm not sure if maybe you guys have some gardens. Uh, you, you plant a garden at uh, your house, if, if you do. Um, like, you know, we have a small garden that, for the most part, Mir Mirella take, uh, tends, takes care of. But, uh, you know, in springtime, you take the seed, you put it in the ground, you know, first loosen up the, the soil, and, you know, you water it, you break down the, the hard ground, you put in the, the little seeds, it's got water, it's got sun, it's got good soil. What happens? Eventually it grows. But what if I were to just sit there and watch it? You know, watch it grow. It would be a long wait, right? But likewise, you know, we don't just sit there and watch. We go about our business and do other things, right? We go other things. Likewise, spiritually, yes, we must have a patience like a farmer. We might not see the results right away. But when we're seeking God and when we're praying, something's happening, Something is happening. We might not see it, but God is moving on our behalf. 
God is always on time and God is always at work in his people. He hasn't left us alone to do our own thing. No, he's, he's given us his spirit uh, with, with us and he works in us continually when we have that desire to follow him. He does that because he loves us and cares about us. Right? He cares about us deeply. He wants us to become closer to him. As, as Jesus told his disciples, launch out into the deep. Don't just stay here near the shore. That's where the blessings, that's where the rewards are. If you go a little offshore, right? A little, a little away from the, from the shallows and the safety of where you're at now. You got to trust God and go a little deeper. That's what he's calling you as young people and, and us a little older to do. To trust God and step into the water. Step in the water of God's promises. And when we do that, the last part, we need to believe that God is at work. That God is at work in his church today. It might not seem that way looking around, but, you know, take, you know, God has always had people. Remember Elijah, how down he was when he felt that he was the only one in Israel that was serving God. He felt that only, he's the only one, but God says, Elijah, there's 7,000 more, I believe it said, uh, or a lot, many more people that were serving the Lord than were just what you thought. Likewise, God is working in his church today. Amen. Trust God and believe that God is at work in your life. If you do these things, right, if we do these things, if we pray if we seek God in his word, if we attend church and worship together, if we live a life that God has called us to live and shine our light and live for him and do the good works, have forgiveness for one another, there's only one end result that God's blessing will be upon us because that's God's word. That's what he told us to do. If we do that, we'll, re we'll reap those re results or rewards just like a farmer will receive this, the, the, the harvest, at harvest time, will receive a reward of his hard work that he put in. So we must believe that God is at work. Philippians 1, 6 says, We are confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God has started a good work in you. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you alone, but he'll continue that work in you till, till you, to you and I, are where we need to be spiritually. So let's take some time tonight as we come before the Lord and, you know, and have that desire, ask God to spark that desire in us to be closer to him and put in the time and then finally believe that God is at work and he will do it in his own time. May God bless you as you seek him to draw closer to him. Song number 241, let's come forward and have a time of prayer.